Welcome to the Auburn Medical Group YouTube live stream. The entertaining medical live stream where viewers can ask real-time questions of real medical doctors. And here are our hosts, Dr. Mark Vaughn and Dr. Gwen Vaughn. Welcome to the Auburn Medical Group live stream with Stephanie. Stephanie, do you want your last name out there or should we just leave it at Stephanie? Stephanie's fine. Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie is a second year PA Plausible student at, at here. Awesome. the University of Tampa Physician Assistant Program. And she is doing her family medicine rotation right here at the Auburn Medical Group. The best place to do family yes. medicine rotation. We have had many students come through here. Some of them stick and stay. So that's kind of cool. But right now, Stephanie's talking about what field? Uh, cardiology. She was talking about cardiology, right? And we'll see. We'll see. Oh. Uh, we'll see how near and dear that is to her heart by the end of the rotation. <laughs> hey, no. and she's going, wow, family medicine is where there. it's at. Yeah, because I'm really <laughs> cool. Okay, let's go to the chat because we can. So we have, uh, of course, Lindsay Antwine letting us know she's here and mm -hmm. Rusty saying hi. Again. And, and Rusty saying, uh, only shows one waiting on, well, that's, that was before we started. One waiting. These, now that we're going. And that one was either Rusty or Lindsay. <laughs> or one or the other. Maybe one of them hadn't registered yet. With Yeah, they were a little bit quick. Oh, we also have Jeanette Lakes uh, from Ireland. Thank you for joining us from Ireland. That's kind of exciting. That's uh, lucky. For those of us here in Auburn to have somebody from Ireland being a part of our audience. Awesome. to see. And you saw that the topic of the show is COVID two years later. Right? We, we, we've years? all seen some COVID, right? Yep. So COVID was not as big of a deal when you started I PA mean, stool. Stool? School? Uh, it was starting to come down. Um, okay. I started school in 2021. So also in Florida. So there were less restrictions on things. So you didn't feel it as much as people who were doing this a year ahead of you? Correct. In other states? Right. I was okay. in person for school. Cool. Okay. So that was your experience, so you were able to actually get that traditional in-class instruction with your classmates. That's um, nice. did, yeah. did you dissect cadavers uh, in the yeah. lab? And, okay, yep. all right, nice. so did the whole regular experience of, yeah. a, of a PA program, and now just down to the last three rotations, COVID. So I'll, I'll let you in on, we'll also keep track of the chat as we're going along, but let you in on what we're looking at over here on the, uh, the internet. So two years later refers to, because it, it's actually three yeah. years ago when we actually started this yes. whole endeavor. Why, so so why two years this, refers to what? Yeah, what, what is that referring to? That's my question. I, I think you don't, it's not coming up. We can't look, can't show it. What's going uh, on? Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll just read it to you. Describe it. The study was done by the VA, specifically the VA at uh, in St. Louis. So... I don't know if there's anybody out there who served at the VA with me. Maybe not. I know not many of the patients are because most of them would have died in the last 25 years or how long it's been since I was at the VA in St. Louis as a student. The, uh, the VA looked at these patients, and the reason it's just two years instead of three years is because they started looking at people who had had COVID before a certain point. And now they're telling us, two years later, what the results are of these people who had COVID compared to a group who had not yet had COVID at that time. So trying to look for long-term outcomes of having had COVID. Long-term differences. Gotcha. And what they're finding is these people have stuff still going on, symptoms, them, and yeah. they have higher risk for some things. And there's, there's a lot of criticism for this, and you can read it in the link that I have in the description uh, in, in science, actually at science.org. And you mm -hmm. can find out that there's criticisms about both how bad it makes it sound having COVID was back then, but also some some criticism is that it makes it sound uh, not as bad as it might actually be. Sure. I'm not so sure I follow that argument as much as the one that says it makes it look worse than it actually is. So th some of the criticisms about how it makes it look like having COVID two years ago is a greater risk to someone's health than having heart disease, for example. Well, that would be COVID, significant. COVID was a much more serious illness back then. It was a different variant. Um, the people who were likely to be known to have it would be the people who were 
symptomatic. Um, people in the VA overall would be getting hit harder because of just the population the VA has a worse outcomes for a lot of things. And, and that's something that we're trying to correct. And they have more chronic illnesses, the ones that are in the VA system and, and going there. So a lot of reasons that they would be more vulnerable to start with. And then the ones who are having COVID and being identified are going to be sicker than the people who may also have COVID, but don't, we don't know because they're asymptomatic infections, which people had early on. There were people still with asymptomatic infections, mm -hmm. even with the pre-Delta variants of COVID. So that's what we see when we see the study that comes out now mm -hmm. saying two years after COVID, people are still having serious uh, risk of their health. And, and yes, it is true for some people. But again, these are the people that got hit the hardest, got hit by the hardest strain. And it may make it look like COVID is a worse disease than it actually is now for the general population. Right. You guys are on board with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys are on board? Too. All right. Let's make a quick little visit over to our so chat. This would have been during Delta, right? That, that would have been two years ago? After. This is or, after Delta. Yeah, yeah. Because Delta came in the first year there. That's right. Yeah. All right, so we haven't yet I seen... I had COVID two years ago. Also had uh, it three years ago. Rusty B also is excited. three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's similar to my... <laughs> Rusty B uh, is letting us know it's four weeks to fall. I guess he's excited that it's almost fall. Hey, fall. Uh, talking right. about the luck of the Irish because of Jeanette Lakes, high from Ireland, that we already have acknowledged being here. All right, I was going to also look at, I don't know if I can present this or not. I was hoping to present, <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. Not working. Maybe, maybe I can make COVID it. COVID numbers? Well, yeah, I was wanting to show to everybody the COVID numbers. And I think, we're having a little bit I, of, oh, uh, oh. I think that might be, you, you can know, see everything. It's really weird there to look is. at it that way. <laughs> you know, I always put these things on the screen thinking, oh, people are going to love seeing these numbers. No, you can't read them. <laughs> Especially if you're watching this on a phone. I squint and get really, you like really me. close to my screen. And then we'll switch back and you'll see our big old heads. <laughs> at least my big old head. It'll be a shock of the sudden. <laughs> so we're looking at the numbers uh, of deaths from COVID by the week. And so, of course, we can't look at just the most recent data because that's not all still in, coming yeah. in. So let's get rid of that. But if we look back a few weeks, we see that the numbers are 520, 486, 499, 490. You notice these are all kind of in the same neighborhood, averaging there's, about 500. Maybe. There's not been that move that much movement here in the last month of the COVID numbers. But if you go back just to April, we're running about half as far as deaths. What was going on in April with COVID um, nationally? So that's pretty good, right? It was it was stuck at that kind of thousand mark for the longest time. I remember that. That was kind of the, our mantra. It was people still dying. We're about thousand people a day. That was um, three four months ago. That yeah. that was going on. So we're in a much better spot now. Not a day. Sorry. Much better spot. Um, and in fact, when we were having that little surge, like when we were out of work a, a month when ago, I had it. or was it a month ago? Or a little it's more than a month ago now. Been almost a month. Yeah. Uh, yeah that month that ago. seems to have passed and gone now, thankfully. Yeah. Uh, but I, I say that, but at the same time, I did look at some numbers at the CDC that did show there, there has been over the last month, some increase nationwide in numbers of infections and hospitalizations. But you see that little, yeah, yeah, that little yeah rise. just a little be, bit, seems to be but happening, but this is so much better. And one of the things, the numbers, I, yeah, they're looking really good. One of the things I didn't point out is that. Uh, what these numbers were when things were bad. So we're like around 500 now. But if you go back to when it was really, really bad, instead of it being around 500, it was like 20,000 deaths per week in the United States. Jeez. That was January of 2022, you know, a year and a half ago. That was really bad. We've come a long way. We're in a much better place now, even though, oh, sorry, everybody, even though we're, we're letting people know that we're still watching it and it's still around. We're at such a better place. Right. The variant is such a, so much lower virulence than it was back then. Yeah. But we do still encourage people who are uh, immunosuppressed or have some other chronic health problem or are over the age of 50 
especially if you're over the age of 65, to keep up on, on the shots, to actually go and get yeah. another shot if it's been six months since your last shot. Because it does help for those people who have the highest risk, those people that if they got it, they'd be the most in trouble. We do still encourage that. And actually, um, there's a new variant booster coming out uh, this fall. They're saying as soon as next month, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> um, but but we'll see. Uh, if that comes out, you know, that, that kind of coincides with the three big viruses that are uh, come, that those fall viruses, Together. so that would be RSV, COVID, and the flu, which we have vaccines for all of those. And actually, with these numbers that we're seeing here, uh, maybe even more important to get that flu shot, because flu numbers yeah. in that flu season are much higher than that. Uh, same thing with RSV for those vulnerable. The RSV vaccine is now available for people over age 60, which you should definitely chat with your doctor Looking about that if that. you're high risk. So, um, and flu shots, I already have some of my patients getting them. So uh, they're, they're out there. We'll be getting in our office for the next month. Yeah, so, we uh, hopefully uh, don't have my report yet when we're going to get them. So hold off just hopefully a little soon. Bit we need to go yeah. get those going. Lindsay so. says, is there another virus we know of that has caused so many complications that last so long. I'm so glad you asked that. What are we going to say to that? Flu. So this is what happened. Years ago. <laughs> there were so many people infected with COVID because it was so contagious uh, all at once. Yeah. It, it was just unprecedented for, for anybody in, that's currently alive. That's how unprecedented this was. We, we, had, we had not seen that many people having the same infection and having it over and over, some of us, I don't know about you. I've been lucky. I know about the two of us. Wow. Probably shouldn't sit so close to us. So now a lot of people are talking about, and we don't, we, we can't say this for sure, but a lot of people are speculating that what we're seeing with long COVID is actually not unique to COVID, but just kind of a long respiratory illness, maybe a generic thing that you see with influenza or other colds that after you have the acute infection, you can have these long lasting effects of your body. And we've had people with, with this, the same symptoms, brain fog or fatigue or some of the other problems after having other viral infections, but maybe never made the connection. Oh, maybe these symptoms they're having are because of that cold or that flu that they had back yep. six months ago, a year ago, two years ago. But some people are, are throwing that out as a possible model for what was going on with people who had these symptoms before COVID came along? Yep. Things that we haven't been able to really classify before that are kind of in this dumpster of diagnoses like chronic fatigue syndrome. Yeah. Like that. Or the people who are going around saying, um, give me a, a Lyme test. Oh, yeah. The, or the ever been chronic bit by Lyme a disease. No? Yeah. Well, I'm worried I have chronic Lyme because I have <laughs> fatigue. Well, you know, maybe that was some kind of a viral illness they had that came and went that caused this problem. All right, going back to our comments, we have Tamara Leung saying, Hi, all, this is T. Leung. Hope you remember. We do. Actually, do you remember that name? T. Leung? No. She, she's been. Sorry. She's, 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 com <laughs> she's commented on the <laughs> but, show before. Yes, it, vaguely. Sorry. Jeanette Lakes sorry. also. <laughs> uh, numbers rising in Ireland again. Lots in hospital. Uh, but Ireland. Not being reported on as was in previous. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not it's being reported not as, here either. It's, it's not just... as sexy as it once was. <laughs> no, not, not really when it's not killing as many people as it was before. Uh, but we are still, yeah. it's still out there. Uh, we still support people who choose to wear a mask in public for their safety or uh, if, they've, if they're following the recommendations because they were exposed, as I was when I was around you, and then afterwards wore a mask in public. Well, here's a theory. Maybe since you were asymptomatic, you had it the whole time and I got it from you. What about that? Unlikely. I don't think so. But... I won't say it's impossible. <laughs> Pretty unlikely, though. How would you know? You had no symptoms. Anyways. Just the timing. Unlikely for me to be going asymptomatic that long. No, I have no idea where unlikely. I got it from. Unlikely. No idea. But I'm not going to say I'm innocent. Some patient somewhere. I'm not that in. No. Anyways. I will sing again. It will happen. Oh, and you will have I was supposed warning. to wear eyeliner today. Was that today? I thought that was another May time. Maybe next time I do a song. Okay. I want to bring okay. the guitar. Uh, don't ask. 
Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't hear this stuff <laughs> before we stuff her between us in this chair in this real tight space, and she can't get out. The poor thing. Anyways, okay. Stephanie, what? What? Let's talk to Stephanie. Yeah. What kind sure. of insights did you get from your first day working at the Auburn Medical Group as a PA student? Um, just about family medicine in general. Is there's yeah. there's a lot. Um, of different things I can walk through the door so that yeah. and you see yeah, a nice true. variety of things yeah. um, and from the sick visits to your annual wellness checkups and anything that walks in you have to be prepared for yes that's right so when you go to your orthopedic surgeon and you say hey I have this cough what does he what does the orthopedic surgeon say so your primary go to your care. primary care yeah <laughs> when they come to the us for, for their cough <laughs> your <primary> care. Yeah. <laughs> and they also have a shoulder pain we don't we don't we, send them off to the yeah, orthopedist. We, don't send we evaluate everybody everywhere. First. We got to evaluate yeah. everything. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Lindsay also says, "A Dr. Von <laughs> Stephanie I'm is sorry. experiencing a Dr. Von <laughs> sandwich." That is correct. Thank you, uh, Lindsay, for disturbing us all with that <laughs> image. Okay. So, uh, anything else either of you have for the show for our wonderful audience? I don't think so. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie, so much for being a part of this. Thanks for and having yes, me. And yes, those of you who are wondering, she did get Dutch Brothers for being on the show with us. Oh, Candy <laughs> Mitch also says, what do you think of the terms being redefined as what happened with the C? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Terms okay. being redefined. Things are always redefined. But things are always redefined for, yeah. for some reason or other. Yeah. Um, to, you know, accommodate new information or whatever. So until next time, this is a program mostly brought to you by Lindsay Antwine, uh, <laughs> along with us. But we do want to mention her name, people who were really into having their name on uh, YouTube or specifically our program somewhere in this, no, this this area over oh, here. Me. That's where it is. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you can learn how to do that in the description. We'll put up a thing for that. So until next time. I'm Dr. Wayne Vaughn. I'm Stephanie. Dr. Mark Vaughn telling you <laughs> to stay in good health. Doctors, thank you for another informative session. Auburn Medical Group is located in Auburn, California, USA. Thank you for participating. Please tell a friend and join us again next week.